As an artist and anchor, I barely get time to take care of my skin. However, I spend most of my time in bright, heavy lights, which often cause skin issues. And for that, I use a coffee wrench kit by Bombay Shaving, which hydrates, exfoliates, rejuvenates, and invigorates my skin. Skin care can just be as important as wearing a nice shirt and tie and a clean white coat. In this video, I will be discussing the Bombay Shaving Coffee Wrench Kit and its key factor. The first thing I was impressed by was its beautiful packaging. Coffee Wrench rejuvenates and invigorates your skin with the goodness of coffee sourced from Kurk. The coffee face wash bolsters the skin's natural defense against pollution and effectively hydrates the skin. The coffee face scrub gently exfoliates the skin to remove dead skin cells, blackheads and tan. Coffee peel off mask remove blackheads with ease and give yourself a brighter glowing skin. Coffee Face Pack deep cleanses the skin and provides a moisturizing touch. Gently exfoliating action, removing dead skin cells, blackheads and tan, enriched with superfoods like coffee, walnut, pomegranate, shea butter and olive oil to keep your skin healthy and nourished. The coffee combo makes a great gift for any occasion. SLS paraben and cruelty free grooming range and it's made in India. So get yourself coffee kit from Bombay Shaving Company and bring the globe back. Hey guys, welcome back once again to another episode of the Alubonaga show and the moment that we all have been waiting is here. Uh, we always wanted some personality to come in our show, to motivate us, to inspire us, and we were always praying for role model. And today we have someone in our midst today. Uh, he is Viku L. Achumi. He recently cracked the prestigious UPSC exam. And uh, today, uh, along with him, there was another uh, lady by the name Imsenaro Waling, but unfortunately she couldn't, be with us because of uh, some obligations, family obligations and all. But nevertheless, we are here today in the hot seat with Mr. Viku L. Achimi. Hi, Viku. Hi. First of all, thank you so much for taking our time and accepting our humble invitation. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, so let's go straight as the tradition we follow. We want to uh, give you time to introduce yourself in your own style. Okay, so you can please tell us about your background, your family, your schooling, college, anything that you want to let the world know about you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Viku Elachumi. I belong to Znebodo district. And I come from the family of seven members, my father, mother, and five children. I have two elder sisters, one elder brother, and I am the fourth child and a younger brother we are. So regarding my schoolings, I've done schooling from Woodland Higher Secondary School in Neboto, mm -hmm. uh, Delhi Public School, Dimapur, Sainik School, Imphal, and for my 11th and 12th, I have done it in v Vikas Vidya Niketan in Vishakapatnam. Wow. And for mm -hmm. my degree in civil engineering, I have done it in IIT Kanpur, and since uh, after my graduation, I have been preparing for UPSC. And fortunately, by the grace of God, I could clear the civil service examination 2021. And today, here I am. Woo! Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, once again, congratulations. Really proud Thank of you. you. Okay, that's a secret code. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, thank you for making us proud. And um, so you you were in like IT Kanpur, right? The prestigious. Yes. Oh, wow, that's like so cool. And then you studied in uh, Senic also. Yes. Great. So now let's talk about your before we go into this. You know the 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 UPSC. The everyone was waiting for that. But let's talk about you, your schooling. So how were you growing up? Like were you like the bookworm, the studious, like always like this, or you're a fun guy? You know when you're growing up, how were you? Oh. As I grew up, I was 
more into uh, different uh, fields, mm -hmm. I should say. I used to play, and okay. but one focus was always the same. That is. Uh, studies. Okay, okay. I kept a lot of focus on studies, mm -hmm. uh, but I also used to play as well. Okay, I used okay. to play football mm -hmm. sometimes. Okay. And yeah, that is what. Okay, I so love. football is one of your passion, right? Yes. So do you still get time to play football these days? Uh, during my preparation days, most of the time uh, was on this preparation. So football was not much. Uh, I did not play much, but I used to follow football. Okay. Uh, okay. At least watching or. I used to follow the football happenings, okay, okay. which were happening. Oh, so. awesome. Did you ever get a chance to watch Alobunaga show? Yes, in fact, the uh, Alobunaga show was uh, where I used to watch mm. in my free times. That wow. was. We're so honored. Thank you so much. <laughs> At least, you know, you watch our uh, show. Okay, let's uh, go straight uh, to your IT, like your experience, you know. Because uh, there are very less people also, you know, cracking there also. So how has your experience been a civil service, I mean, engineer in IIT studying that? How has your experience, you know, been, yeah? Well, studying in IIT, it gave me an opportunity to study with one of the brightest minds mm -hmm. in the country and also getting an exposure to uh, various fields, not mm -hmm. only in studies, uh, but also I also used to get an opportunity uh, to interact with different people from different uh, fields and backgrounds while okay. in IIT and yes we do have extracurricular activities as well I used to involve myself in uh, playing football as well that mm -hmm. in my IIT days okay, okay. and yes other than that the academics in IIT is so much rigorous mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that we couldn't neglect it mm -hmm. and studies was also one major area where I used to focus there. Yeah. Wow, wow. And how was your like class 10 and 12 result because I saw many people asking about that in social media uh, in my 10th standard, mm -hmm. so you mean to say presentation? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Okay. If, if you're, I mean, if you're comfortable. So in my 10th standard, uh, that was CGPA system. So okay. I scored 9.8 CGPA. Ooh. And for my 12th standard, uh, that was percentage wise. So I scored 95.4 percentage. Wow. And yes, that is. No wonder why you got IT. <laughs> anyway, let's go, uh, you know. To, to the questions that we got from the uh, audience. So this time, uh, you know, for a change, I asked our audience to, uh, you know, prepare a question for you. So this is the first time in the history of our show that, you know, we are going to ask questions only for the audience, okay? Uh, but then I'm going to put mine also here and there. So let's go straight. Uh, this is from Young Gunner. So he wants to know about your optional subject and your time management. How did you, you know? Do, during your preparation? So my optional was political science mm. and international relations. They said PSIR. Okay. And with time management, uh, so uh, I had a plan one day in advance uh, before uh, I go to sleep, I used to make a timetable mm -hmm. and a to-do list of what to study mm. and what not to study. Okay. In a way that helped me to have a pre-plan uh, before going to sleep. Uh, so in a way, I began my day even before I went to sleep. Okay. And the next day was the automatic thing which I used to do. Mm -hmm. So in the morning and then afternoon, uh, I used to follow the same plan, <clears throat> wow. uh, the to-do list which I make one night before. Wow, that's like such a good tip for all of us also, you know, even in any field, you know. I need to make tips for, I mean, plans for tomorrow. Anyway, so before I go to the next question, when was the time you decide like, okay, I want to appear uh, be an IS officer or IPS or whatever you know I want to appear this exam when, when did you make this decision or when you know so the first decision that I made was in my 12th standard wow. uh, but by back then I was not much aware the, about the nitty-gritties of civil services mm -hmm. uh, however in my first year of my engineering I get to come across uh, people in this field doing great jobs and mm -hmm. uh, especially I would like to mention um, uh, the person who inspired me, uh, it was it is Armstrong Pami, wow. the 2009 batch of IS mm -hmm. officer. Uh, the works that he was doing, uh, I came to know much more about it uh, in my first year of engineering. Back then, I was firm that yes, I this is the right job that I should also be entering. Wow. So back then, that is what when I decided. Oh. Wow. Shout out to Armstrong Pami, sir. Uh, we're really proud of you and. 
please keep doing what you're doing. You know, he is amazing. You know, we've been following sure. him since that the road that he made. He, you know, he became an icon then. Let's move on to the next question by Suli. What is the biggest sacrifice made to reach where you are today? Uh, biggest ability one needs to possess to crack the UPC, you know, CSC? Yeah. Uh, so the biggest sacrifice, I don't think there was one biggest sacrifice, uh, okay. but there were lots of small, small sacrifices mm -hmm. uh, which I had to make in order to reap the bigger reward due to those small sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So namely to mention few uh, sacrifice in terms maybe um, the phone which I used to carry, I used to carry an analog keypad phone wow. or it could also be uh, staying away from social medias mm -hmm. and lots of other small, small sacrifices. Say for example, uh, not going to friends birthday party or sometimes these wow. kind of small, small sacrifices <laughs> which I sacrifice in, instead. So this in a way had reaped me a bigger reward. Wow. And also with respect to the qualities. Yeah, that, uh, biggest ability one needs to okay. possess. Yeah. So the biggest quality. ability, I believe for exams such as civil services examination, it requires hard work, mm -hmm. uh, dedication, okay. uh, discipline, okay. and consistency and, and also to persevere through this wow. journey. Hmm. So these are not one, but few okay. qualities one needs to possess. Wow. Thank you so much. And uh, to add on that, I would also like to mention, you know, the other day I came to know that they are, uh, you know, Imsenaro also, like, you know, she don't use WhatsApp. And I was like, wow, you know, you guys, no wonder you guys, you know, passed this exam. Anyway, do you use now? Now you passed the exam. Are you using social media or are you still not using? Oh. Yes, I was. I used WhatsApp. That's right, right, right. I was in Twitter for some time. Okay. But not at the moment. Okay, yeah. wow. Now, next is from Nilo TK Achumi. How many hours do they spend time in studying? Uh, studying, uh, usually, we study. For me personally, I studied for six to seven hours. That was when the exam was not so near. But when the exam uh, gets nearer, say one month before the exam, mm -hmm. our studies time usually increases to 10 to 12 hours. So, so how long do you sleep? Like sleep, I sleep a lot actually. Okay. So I usually sleep for say eight hours. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, it's a guilty pleasure that okay. I sleep, slept even for nine to 10 hours sometimes. Oh, wow. uh, but I emphasize that the hours in which I am awake, I should be studying well on those times. Ooh. So I should not be feeling sleepy while I am studying. Mm -hmm. So that is one way which I used to manage my sleep time as well. Wow. Okay, next is from uh, Rudanu Ringa. Is it necessary to go for UPSC coaching? And com uh, another question is from Achim Naga. Can we clear UPSC by studying in Nagaland only? Okay, so if you can answer this to, you know, so taking coaching for UPSC, either to take coaching or not, it's a biggest question in, for anyone starting their preparation. For mm -hmm. me also it was that. Mm -hmm. So I completely understand that. And for coaching, uh, I think everyone has its own way of studying. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for example, the 685 candidates who have cleared uh, the exam mm -hmm. UPSC 2021 had their own Six hundred and eighty-five different strategies to clear. Yeah. So, uh, with respect to this coaching, um, it's their own capabilities they should see. For this, one should be uh, at least be aware regarding the syllabus, the nitty gritties of the exam, mm -hmm. and also at least study for themselves for some weeks or maybe a month or two, mm -hmm. in order to know either to take coaching okay. or not, and then decide upon it. Ooh. And if possible, uh, if they have a guidance mm -hmm. guidance in which they could get from uh, someone who is preparing or who who has cleared this exam okay uh, then that will be also a good one and the second question okay was, now second question is uh let me club it together can we clear upc by studying in nagalin only by achim naga and this is another similar question from dao nyam uh, why do upc aspirants from nagalin who appear in nagalin itself never get through uh, highlight the comparison between Nagaland and Delhi, Naga experience. So studying in Nagaland, I think it is possible because 
Even for me in this attempt, uh, I studied in Nagaland mm. for the entire attempt. I had my center in Kohima and I paired it and I studied in Dimapur uh, throughout this attempt. So it is possible. Uh, but I would like to highlight a few things in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a requirement of proper environment uh, in which you study. Mm. There should be no social obligations. Mm. Uh, if you are studying at home, there should be no social obligations mm -hmm. in which you are studying. Okay. And others, one very important factor is the environment in which you create. For mm -hmm. example, the friend circle which you have. Yeah. If you have a proper friend circle <laughs> or a study group, mm -hmm. maybe of three or four people who is seriously preparing for this UPSC examination or maybe any exam mm -hmm. to say, uh, you can study in anywhere, be it Nagaland, be it anywhere in India. Wow. So that is one factor. That's such a you know big boost for all the people, you know, to be honest, who can't afford to go to cities also. And um, yeah, the, it's a meat breaker also. Many people might be thinking, oh, it's a pass scroll, it's a bar, 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 it's a But then here's an example, you know, a man sitting here, he appeared his exam from Kohima and he's here in the hot seat today and he appeared, I mean, cracked the exam this year. Wow, and thank in, you so much, brother. In this one, I would, add, I would like sure, to add sure, one sure. thing. We have a, a lot of online materials now available and also online classes. Mm -hmm. So earlier, which was not accessible to us, we have internet connections in which mm -hmm. we can make best use out of it. So studying now is made possible for UPSC by studying anywhere in India and mm -hmm. even in Nagaland now. Wow. This is from Shem. How do you remember what you study? Any specific technique? You know? Remembering was also an issue for me, mm -hmm. uh, especially when we study history, lots of names and dates to remember. Yes. Uh, but I think the best technique is to revise, revise and revise. So the more you revise, the more you retain and remember. Mm -hmm. So. If you can uh, put your time more on revision instead of quality, focus on quality uh, uh, rather than quantity. Mm -hmm. So you have to revise more uh, the subjects which you are studying and that will help you uh, in, retaining, in retaining the things that you have studied. So this was my technique. Okay. There are other techniques as well, but I am not aware about it. <clears throat> okay. So uh, next is from... I'm sure this question will re relate to many college students now. Imti Linkumar, uh, Longkumar, I guess. How long, how should we prepare for competitive exams beforehand, right from the college days, he's asking. We can start preparing uh, right from the college days. Uh, if we are decided, we have decided on what career path to take up. Okay. So college days, but in my opinion, I would uh, suggest you to uh, at least in the final year or maybe the final semester, get to know more about the exam, even if you do not completely uh, jump into the preparation of the exam. So when you are preparing uh, in the final year or maybe the final semester of your college days, you get to know the nitty gritties of, for example, for me, this is UPSC examination. So UPSC syllabus itself is so vast and lots of materials to study mm -hmm. and things like that. So you get to know the demand of the exam in the final year. So that will be an added advantage for you when you graduate. And in the first year after your graduation, you could directly dwell into the preparation. Mm -hmm. So the final semester, final year, final year yeah, right? that is an okay. ideal way. So if there's anyone who is dreaming, who was aiming for this, then final year is your answer. Now, this is from uh, I never did. Wow. I'm also thinking of preparing for UPSC, but at the same time, I want to appear NPSC too. So I just want to know if we can appear for NPSC with the same syllabus which we have been preparing for UPSC or is it completely different syllabus? Yeah. NPSC and UPSC in itself is a difficult exam to crack. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to UPSC syllabus, it's a vast syllabus, it's huge syllabus. So when you cover uh, syllabus for UPSC, you get to cover majority of the syllabus which is included in NPSC as well. And added to that, uh, NPSC has also its specific uh, demands as well. We have a uh, specific topic on Nagaland. Mm. And so you have to study specifically for Nagaland. Uh, but overall, if you study well for UPSC, uh, I believe NPSC will be doable in a way. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend you to 
focus on UPSC if you want to focus, if you want to appear for UPSC as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but other way around, if you uh, focus only for NPSC and uh, think about UPSC, it will become a bit difficult. Okay. So that is what I have. Okay. So did you ever attempt uh, for NPSC also, by the way? Uh, so last year, it was <coughs> conducted in November month. Okay. So I appeared a prelims exam. Okay. And that is the only attempt which I gave. Okay, okay. Did you clear it? Uh, yes, fortunately, I cleared the prelim stage. Okay. And, wow, but, congratulations. Yeah. But you're not going for the men's. Okay. Now, uh, how, in how many attempts did you clear this UPSC, by the way? So this was my fifth attempt. Fifth attempt. Yes. Okay, okay. Wow. Never give up. Okay, now this is from Kahoto S. Yepto. As a technical graduate and struggling to cope up with arts subject, my question to Sir Viku is, how did you manage at first since the subject dealing is like heaven and earth? Even me, I want to ask, because you're from civil engineering, you know, and then, yeah, so technical and, yeah. Well, first of all, you have to know uh, your strengths and weakness before you enter into this, mm -hmm. into the preparation. The demand of UPSC is uh, mostly humanities. Mm -hmm. So if you find it difficult to study humanities subject, it's better not to jump into UPSC. Mm -hmm. Many people from this technical background, they do clear it, mm -hmm. but... Uh, there's also other opportunities in technical background as well. So if you are more comfortable with uh, uh, the technical area subjects, mm -hmm. it's better you apply for technical services okay. and not venture into this uh, UPSC civil service examination. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Now this is very interesting from Avi Naga. Did they maintain any sort of diet while studying? Any diet routine? Yeah. Uh, I think that's a very much relevant question, mm -hmm. which we tend to ignore. Okay. Uh, especially the diet which we tend to consume is uh, rice, mm -hmm. and sometimes it becomes heavy. Yeah. And also that is, it burns out fast. Mm. So we need some energy giving food which lasts longer. Wow. Uh, so in my previous attempt, I focus on that aspect as well. So uh, proteinaceous food, beans and even soya beans, that's a good diet which we can also have mm -hmm. and also i preferred eating rotis over rice wow. in the last attempt okay and so that uh, i don't feel drowsy while preparing or while studying so mm -hmm. yes. wow that's very interesting yes as you rightly said this is one important topic we always ignore and many people you know, don't even give importance to this but it's so important now let's go to the next question by Jim Im Song how did they cope up with the mental pressure while preparing for UPSC yeah um, UPSC preparation is a mental journey as well mm -hmm. you have to be mentally prepared so mental pressure when it comes to mental pressure um, how did we cope up right yes yes, yes. so cope up I mm -hmm. was uh, Focusing also on the physical aspects of my body, mm -hmm. so physical and mental aspects. So for physical, um, I started running, jogging especially, and exercising. Mm -hmm. And also meditation also helps a lot to calm our mind. So in a way, it helps us to calm the pressure which we face mm -hmm. in, with respect to our studies and also with respect to the societal pressure which we may face. And other than that, the most important thing is the spiritual aspects. So, whom do you pray? Mm -hmm. uh, I, for, for me, I personally, I used to um, focus, I used to believe that uh, the Lord is with me at all points of time, no matter what the situation. Mm -hmm. So, I always believed in Him and I trusted in those hard times, mm -hmm. so to cope up through those mental aspects as well. Wow, that's... Deep. Now, uh, supplementing to this, there's another question from An Anguhi. Uh, my question is, please tell us your lowest point of life and how did you, how did the transition took place? Because my aim is your present achievement and I am at the lowest point of my life. Uh, when it comes to the lowest point of life, there's a context, a background story to it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was in 2020. Okay. Uh, that there was a huge lockdown which yes, was imposed. Yes, yes, yeah. So by then I was in Delhi. Mm. So I was all alone in the flat uh, during those lockdown. I was preparing day and night and then I was giving in my very best whatever I could. When everyone went home, I was all alone in the flat mm -hmm. preparing. Uh, but I was hoping that I clear in that attempt itself. And I gave in my very best. But when the time of prelims came, I couldn't clear the, in the prelim stage itself. Mm -hmm. 
And the failure in prelims was in a way after such effort and also a lot of time invested in this preparation mm -hmm. and facing those failure, it was one of the lowest moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And to cope up, uh, I think it is always uh, my parents who was always my backbone of support wow. and also my friends. Mm -hmm. And as I have mentioned earlier, to cope up with all those, uh, we should always run to the Lord, mm -hmm. our God. Yeah. Uh, who is always our protector and al always our comforter mm -hmm. in our times of weakness. And, and there is a specific Bible verse in those days which mm -hmm. I clinged into. Uh, th those were Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Mm -hmm. um, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Wow. Uh, they shall mount on their wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk but not faint. So this particular verse kept me going in all those wow. times of failures. Yes, so these were some of the ways in which I could cope up those lowest moments. So, yes. Thank you so much. I'm sure this is going to boost all the people who are going through, you know, down right now. And I'm, I'm sure there are people who are trying and not making it and there must be, you know, at the verge of giving up but then i'm sure after hearing this from you they're going to stand up and work harder so best wishes to all those people who are preparing right now never give up and now uh let's take this question uh the last question before we go to the break this is uh very interesting from yem jong okay everyone would love to know <clears throat> how they crack upsc but there are lots of students who are not interested in UPSC and NPSC, but under lots of pressure from parents. So what is your opinion about those students or maybe any advice to those parents? Because uh, as he or she clearly said there are certain amount of people who are not into this and they know their capability is also sometimes. But then the parents pressure and also you have any message for uncles and aunties? Yes, this is a very relevant question mm -hmm. and I want to thank Yim Jong, Yim Jong yeah. for asking this question and my message to the parents in this aspect will be uh, there are lots of fields today in which one can excel. In fact, there is entrepreneurships and there is art. Our brother Aloboy is excelling in it and we have uh, sports and other fields in which one can excel. So. Uh, by forcefully uh, pushing your children into this red dress, you are in a way wasting their life, their precious uh, years of youth uh, in this. And if they have no interest in it, it's obvious that it's difficult to clear this exam. Mm -hmm. This exam requires your heart, soul, mind, everything to be inside this. Mm -hmm. And if you are not interested in itself, it's almost impossible to clear. So you can, in a way, uh, instead encourage your children in the talents that they have, support them, fully back them, and they will excel in it and they will bring glory to your family as well, to the family as well, and also to the Nagas, and in the, also contribute towards the nation building. So that is my suggestion to the parents. Wow, I hope all the uncles and aunties heard that. Pachavra interest na thagi le to joburosti na kuribi. That's the bottom line. Takan ki khushi pai ki di bala se tati pathabi. Inya kore le tanam bi khushi thagi wo aro successful bi ho wo. Hoye mohan buje amma bawa kan tai kan mon bra bishi jane. Takan experience to bishi ase pare. Hoye le bi iti ala zamana di to mohan iti ala generation di to bacha kan ki interest ase bacha la capability bi sagi na iti a sathi bra kani shina. Uh, mas to kasti uthi bolle na pare. Itu nishna soap manu, you know, isor ba alag alag dige na se itu bra chobrosti na kore gina bacha ke bi hudi bi ni ona ki bhala se tarre jabo parle balo bogo na koye se. On this note, we'll take a break and we'll come back. So don't go away. Hi guys, welcome back to the second segment of the Alabanaga show in conversation with Viku El Achumi. Welcome back once again and let's continue straight to the next question from Akke Somba. Is there any possibility of we Nagas making it into AI are all in their rank 50 in the near future? Certainly there is a possibility okay. and in fact in the past uh, there is Mem Inkongla, mm -hmm. Jamir. 
she cleared in 60s and 70s ranges wow. of wow. all India rank. Wow. That's a commendable feat. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, people have done it in the past and why not in the future? Yes. And with lots of accessibility in terms of resources which we have mm -hmm. and awareness about this exam. Mm -hmm. I believe it is not far from now that mm -hmm. Nagas will even come in the top tens. Ooh. So, yes, yeah, that is possible. Let's believe and keep praying for that. Now, next, next is from Lal Ri Hekte Mar. Is there any chance to clear the exam using just the inky, punky, inky pinky punky concept? <laughs> well... That is a question in itself. So yeah, <laughs> okay, just for fun. Now this is from Paul Lentang to Boy. How do you feel coming to all over Naga show? Well, I am excited, and I am humbled as well for inviting me here. Thank you, all over brother. It's our pleasure. It's our and pleasure. Thank you. In fact, anyway, uh, we want to mention also we got more than five six hundred questions, and from there we could. I mean, most of the questions were similar, no doubt, but we just handpicked few. So I hope the audience don't mind. And we also have a limited time and sir don't have much time also. So we, we had to cut short. So please don't mind. Moving ahead to the next question. Uh, this is from Headhunter. Sir, Alobo, I'm a big fan of you. If you happens to read my comment, please kindly ask this question to him. How could they resist love temptation? Uh. So, love temptations, Yes, that's a tricky question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, I was away from social media, mm -hmm. so that in a way uh, minimized a lot of temptation attacks, mm -hmm. I should say. And also, I was also firm with my um, aim and decision. So, mm -hmm. when those love temp so-called love temptation comes, mm -hmm. uh, those I could resist it. Okay. So, you should be firm with what you are aiming for, yeah. so those temptations become easy to resist. Yeah, can be a distraction, right? Yeah. These things. Woo. So if you are preparing, so this is a really good, you know, inspiration. So break up. <laughs> just, kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, now everyone's like, oh, break up. Okay, moving ahead. AS Kiria vlog. Does our, uh, I think we have mentioned this, does our study environment matters for UPSC and PSC preparation? I guess, yes, right? You mentioned, you answered already. So now this is a question. Uh, how many hours, I think it's the same thing related there. Yeah. How many hours they spend in mobile phone? So you want to say anything on that? So as I said, I use analog phone. Okay. That was keypad phone. So I only use it for talking to my parents or friends sometimes. Okay. So I did not have to worry about that. Don't you feel lonely sometimes, you know? Like, but so, in terms of loneliness, I always had some close friends to whom I could talk to okay, okay. in those times. And okay. I also had my parents okay. with whom I used to talk regularly. Okay, so, okay. loneliness in preparation, yes, to mm -hmm. be practical, it is, yes, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And this UPSC civil service examination, the journey in itself is a lonely journey, they say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, sometimes lonely. Okay. And um, this will be the last question from the audience. What are the best advice for the aspirants preparing for a competitive exam? So the advice to the aspirants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So when uh, this is not only for the competitive exam, but okay. also for any approach of any aim that you are approaching, life mm -hmm, in general, mm -hmm. uh, it is very important for us to be uh, having certain qualities, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, such as hard work, okay. hard working nature. Mm -hmm. And also we need to imbibe uh, the spirit of discipline in us okay. and with consistency mm -hmm. and obviously the persistence which we, with which we need to persist. Okay. Uh, but above all this, uh, have faith in God, mm -hmm. uh, the God Almighty. Okay. So with this, these are the few messages, like these are the few qualities in which one needs to imbibe, mm -hmm. I believe, for... Uh, as for the competitive examination aspirants and life in general as well. Okay, thank you so much for that. Now let's go uh, to my questions now. Okay, let's go, um, maybe uh, if you can, maybe explain them very short uh, to all the young people, maybe it's a school students who don't know about this exam, okay? So if you can, or maybe the parents, the process, or maybe what are the different levels you go, you know, different kind of exams in this, like, say, example, prelim means interview. So if you can explain in your own style, you know, to all the students, you know, for a layman, yeah. 
So UPSC civil service examination, uh, it's an examination in which um, jobs such as IAS, IPS, IFS and other allied services are selected. And uh, we have usually nearly 10 lakhs of candidates appears mm -hmm. every year. Uh, mm -hmm. In this, there are th around 1000 candidates which get selected. Mm -hmm. And in this, we have three rounds of sure. examination. Uh, the first round is the preliminary stage in which majority of the candidates gets filtered in this stage. Mm -hmm. And nearly around 15, 000, 10 to 15,000 appear for the main stage. Mains is mostly about your writing skills and also uh, mm -hmm. the essays in which we write and also the subjects uh, such as the political science in which I have mentioned my optional subject. Mm -hmm. It is where this knowledge are tested. And once you qualify this uh, stage, uh, nearly 2,000 students are uh, selected for the interview stage. Mm -hmm. And in the interview stage, uh, usually the demand is a bit different. Mm -hmm. Although the weightage of marks is only 275, it has a huge role to play in, your, in our selection. Mm -hmm. uh, it tends to test our qualities such as uh, the person, it is not the interview per se, but the personality test. Mm -hmm. So it tests our personality and it tests our qualities such as integrity, moral and intellectual integrity wow. and presence of mind and lots of other qualities is tested in this. Uh, it is uh, an interview stage. It usually uh, gets to around 30 minutes. Okay. And there, there are five members in which they ask, ask questions from different aspects of our life. Okay. So not only education, not only um, knowledge, but also something which comes from inside us to test our quality. Mm -hmm. So these are the three stages. And based on it, uh, on the total score, you get the merit list mm -hmm. and you get allotted the services according to the ranks which you get into this in the mm -hmm. final list. Mm -hmm. So this is what the exam, the process of the exam is. Wow, thank you so much. That is like so clear right now. I'm sure uh, all the young people or, you know, people who are not aware, now you know it, you heard it from the mouth, you know, the horse's mouth. Now uh, let's talk about the interview. Kinia Tagisha, you know, like uh, what were the questions, is, you know, asked and if you would like to share, you know, your experience about your interview. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, as I've mentioned, the interview uh, goes on for nearly 30 minutes. Okay. So, in it, uh, there is one chairperson mm -hmm. and four members. Okay. okay. Uh, they ask questions in turn-wise. Okay. And before that, we have to submit our detailed application form, okay. where we submit our educational backgrounds okay, and okay. our hobbies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. our interests and also our our achievements as well in the past. Okay. So, based on it, and also our homestead. Mm -hmm. So based on it, they ask us question. Okay, okay. So for me, being from Nagaland mm -hmm. and from Northeast, it was also in a way new. In a way, not many people from Northeast comes uh, to the interview stage. So they were mostly focusing on the interview on the Northeast and Nagaland aspects. Wow. So almost sixty percent of the questions were asked from Northeast and Nagaland. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, such as the diversity which we have in. India and also mm -hmm. the Northeast and also the biodiversity, mm -hmm. the nature environment which we have in Northeast, there wow. were quite, it was just a communication, a conversation, an informed okay. conversation which we had with uh, as an adult. Mm. So they wanted to know mm. more about the culture in Nagaland. Okay. And also they asked a, f a few other questions from international relations which are happening. Mm -hmm. And also they asked questions from national issues which are occurring in the present moment, mm -hmm. mostly about current issues. Mm -hmm. And they wanted our opinion. It was not a fact-based opinion. It was not about a uh, question, what is this one? What, not a viva per se, mm -hmm. but more about mm -hmm. my opinion on the issues which okay. were happening. Oh. Uh, so those were it. And also, as I still remember, the first question which was asked to me by the chairperson was, um, he asked me based on a quote, that is, honesty is the best policy. Mm -hmm. So what is your opinion on it? Tell okay. me. Okay. So like, that was the question which was asked. And also mm -hmm. they asked me questions such as, uh, give me the definition of integrity. Mm -hmm. So those questions, you oh. can expect, expect questions from various fields. So okay. yeah, this was a few gist of the personality test in uh -huh. which I had. Well, thank you so much. And then, yes, we've come to the end. Uh, but before we uh, go to the end, 
this is just a fun question, but what if in the future, you know, you want to get married? So what are the qualities you're looking in a wife? You know, I'm sure so many girls want to know this. So what are the qualities if you're given a chance, you know, like you want to in the future, not now, I'm sure you'll be serious right now. So uh, <laughs> you've put me in a spot, brother. <laughs> Uh, but mm. yes, uh, that's an inevitable question for mm -hmm. all of us at one point of time mm -hmm. in life. Uh, so I always see that the person in which uh, whom I will be looking is, I think, it's she should love God first. Amen. And secondly, she should be lovable as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so being from... Uh, family, I would take my mother's opinion mm -hmm. on it. Wow. So these are the few things in which mother's opinion, that's also matters a lot. Wow. So, Mama's yeah. boy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on that note, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we, we're going to end up with this note, but then don't go where we still have uh, something. Uh, we have a gift hamper for uh, Sir Viku. This is from Safo, sir. And I would like to hand it off to you. Thank they, you so they, much. Uh, yeah, they told me to give it to you. So Safo uh, is, uh, you know, a brand. So they have a lot of brands coming. So they have all these things for you. I didn't even see what is inside, but then it looks lovely. And then for those who want to know about Safo, you can go to www.safo.in. And uh, they're opening, uh, you know, launching Lily Frank Thrift on uh, 24 June uh, at uh, Duncan Basti opposite morong express so if anyone is free you can go and check out their clothes buy clothes on the launch date and that's it and we also have another gift hamper this is from uh, uh the imperial is academy sir so uh, they have this thank you uh, so much momento, and then they have a gift for you sir and also they uh, this is from yes a flower to you sir from uh, yeah Imperial, yeah, yeah, please, please, yeah. Imperial IS Academy out here. So, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Imperial IS Academy is located in Dimapur and Kohima also. In Dimapur, they have in uh, the Dobinala Junction. And so, if there's anybody who's looking for coaching center, this is one of the center. Now, uh, we've come to the answer, but if there's anything you would like to say to the audience or Anyone in particular, we would like to give you the, you know, the farewell nod to our audience, please. All right. So my ending message to the younger generations, the youths, uh, will be to assess your strengths and weaknesses, your capabilities. And best on it, uh, you should decide upon your career options. And also have this reason behind why you are choosing your career that why, that motive, that reason behind why you are pursuing such and such a career. And just venture into it, give your full best effort uh, to achieve that. And adding to that, as I have given my message earlier, uh, qualities such as hard work, this is also a quality I believe. And also discipline is very required uh, for achieving greater heights in life. So discipline, and with adding to it consistency in your efforts, I should say consistency and also that persistence irrespective of the, the results which you get. So you need to have persistence. <clears throat> and above all this, keep God as the guiding force for you. Trust in God, have faith in God, that if you truly give your everything in it, He will take you, He will take you to the journey, to that achievement. So this is the message that I want to have. Uh, I want to give to the younger generations. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we wish you all the best. And I, I heard the allocation is not done for your services. But whatever allocation you get, we pray that, you know, you, you, you will do your best. And uh, we, we, we are praying that you'll be the role model that, you know, the young generation is looking. Because uh, one of my other guests said earlier, you know, we need an idol to produce idol and um, we want you to be the role model to produce more Viku Achumi from Nagaland you know or maybe from Northeast also so be the inspiration thank you so much and best wishes for your future and 
on that note, we come to the end. And thank you so much, viewers. As I said, we have so many questions, but then um, we could not pick everything. So we want to say sorry. And I hope you guys um, enjoyed this conversation, this episode as much as I did. And I hope we all learned so much today. And all the best to all the aspirants in your preparation and all the young people dream big. God bless. This is Halloween.